Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a long awaited topic and that is time series calculation in Panda Power. What are time series? Time series can be seen here for example. Those are the infeed of a PV plant and a wind power plant during one day and also the residential load. And what we could do now is run a power flow calculation in the loop just to calculate the power flow results or we could use the brand new Panda Power time series module for this. Just some side note first, you can find the documentation uh, about the time series module here on um, the Reader Docs documentation of Panda Power. Click on time series simulation and there you will find some Jupyter notebooks to learn by yourself. And also here, which is the overview about the module shows how it works. So first we start by um, defining some controllers which are used to update the values inside the grid. So for example, update the P values of the generators or the loads and those are run in a loop. So you run for each time step a control loop, which just updates in our example now the P values of the generator and the load and then goes to the next time step and runs a power flow again. So this is what we're going to do now. You can read all this stuff. I don't want to bore you with the details, rather get into coding now. Okay, to get started, we need a grid as always. So we import the Panda Power Networks. And for in this case, we used the simple example here, which is a grid with seven buses, one load and one external, um, one load, one static generator and one generator. And I'd like to change the static gener uh, the, the generator to a static generator. And for this, I'm gonna drop um, this, the, the generator here first and then create a static generator at the same bus which is five so we have um, a grid with two let's print it a grid with two static generators one at bus six one at bus five and a grid with one load at bus six so Okay, so this is our example grid. You can find it in the document uh, documentation as well if you want to know how it looks like. Okay, so now we need some time series. And since we have these in our example as a JSON file, uh, we're gonna load them with the read JSON function of pandas. And if you want, you can plot this uh, with matplotlib. So you import matplotlib pyplot as plot and uh, then you just do plot.show and what you're gonna see is um, something like this which looks a little bit weird because the time step is also plotted. Uh, what you need is only the part PV wind and residential and if you select that you're gonna see nothing because I've done a mistake. And then you see here how the profiles look like the one I've just shown in the introduction. Okay, so those are the profiles we want to use now for our calculation. You can also um, print the head of the data frame so you see what's inside, inside of it. So those are at the time series for the PV, the wind, the residential. Um, load here and, and generators for each time step. Okay, so to do run the power flow calculation, you could now update in a loop each value for uh, f um, from this uh, time series here, or you can use the Panda Power time series module. So as we've seen, we have um, in this grid a wind, a PV, uh, two, two, two static generators and the load. So we need in this case two controllers which are imported from the Panda Power control module. And from here we import the so-called constant controller, which is just a controller which does nothing except changing the, the desired value for an element in a time step. So we create here for this grid and the S gen here in this case because it asks you what, what you want to change. So you add for this grid and the table S gen a controller which changes the PMW values and then it wants to know for which elements it should change something and here we have the index of all the elements so the, the two, two uh, elements in here 
and then we need a name for the profiles we want to use in that case we want to say use the wind and the pv profile from from this grid so this is the, the the name of the column in the data frame and then we have to give it a data source which is the data frame but we have to create a time series um, data source for this and in this case it's a so-called df data a data frame data data source this is needed so the module knows what what you um, wh where the data is coming from so here this is um, a data so source which holds the data frame if we look into it you will see that it has a function which is called get time step value and this is called in each time step and gets the values out of the data frame okay so this data frame is given to the controller and um, we give the same data frame to a second controller which here controls the load and here we have to give it the index of the loads you want to control in, the, in this case all the loads which is just one but we change the profile to residential and now we control the load with the residential curve okay so now we defined that we will we have these two controllers if we print net controller you will see that there are now two constro uh, controller uh, co controllers in this grid which control here in that case the s gen and here the load okay so now we can already start uh, to run the time series um, uh, simulation by importing the time series run function and um, we just define here this um, net because we added the controllers so everything everything is set up we define the time steps and if we say now from 0 to 95 we have here a 50 if we print the data frame um, we're gonna see that it has uh, 95 time steps and all of we want to calculate these time steps now so we can um, execute this already so we have now our grid defined we got the time series we added the controllers and now we run the time series so you see here a little animation which runs the time series for this grid this is of course um, a little bit useless because we don't have any output now so where's your output what what you want to get is for example the line loading or the bus voltages and to get this you are gonna need an so-called output writer so we import from the time series module the output writer like this and then we add or we define here um, the output writer for this grid and we have to say for which time steps we want to save the output in this case all the time steps and then we can define where we want to store our results in that case we want to store it in this folder here where we are at the moment to a subfolder called results and we want to output the results for example to um, excel files okay so now we have defined an output writer which will store some results which we have to define now so we add a log variable in that case we want to log for example from RESBUS the voltage in per unit and we also like to for example save from res line the loading in percent and if we calculate now the time series there will be a folder created inside of the current folder which is called results now and inside there you will find some excel files including the results you just specified we can load them back if you want as well so we can use the pandas function read excel and then we just have to define where we want to read this result from so there will be a subfolder called restline because we defined it here and another subfolder in this as well called loading percent and in there will oh no no it's not a subfolder but it's um it's an excel file called loading uh, called called loading percent and now we have that we just uh, should specify here that the index column for this data frame is zero and now we can plot this as well and if we show it you will see 
Oh no, it calculated again. And you will see in the end, this is the output. So you have for the four lines in this grid now, the line loading, which changes um, during the day. So much about the time series calculation. What we've just seen in the little example is that we've used two controllers, one for loads, one for s -gens. but you could also add more controllers if you want, for example, to control the reactive power, you could define a second time series and add more constant controllers to change the reactive power of the generators in your time series calculation as well.